All right, guys, I'm going to teach you how to do a split file partial denture design in Mesh Mixer, your favorite software. Open up Mesh Mixer, which is a free download, and import your upper jaw. And then go ahead and import your antagonist. You can see the color files if you have the right OPJ, but otherwise they'll just be stone colored. Go ahead and click your upper and then go to um, Edit Duplicate. And do that a few times to create a few duplicates. And you're going to rename one of the duplicates um, and call it block out model you could rename the original and just call it the you know the original or um, upper and then you could do another duplicate and call it tooth or something like that because we're going to need a few of these upper models in order to work with here so um, again you could rename if you don't see your objects browser you should just uh, go up to um, visualization and turn it on so now we're going to go ahead and um, extract a tooth and re replicate it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go to edit, um, generate face groups, and then play with the threshold until I could see um, mostly the tooth selected. And then I'm going to go to my shaders and drag um, a metallic shader on it so that I get rid of the color. And now I'm going to double click the tooth that had been already selected for me. And I'm going to come in with my select brush and just fill in areas that um, need to be filmed because you cannot have any little islands or space anywhere. And if you have issues, go uh, separating that out, go to um, modify expand border or expand group, and you'll close some holes. And then you're going to hit B on your keyboard for border, smooth border. And then you're going to hit Y on your keyboard or separate to make it its own mesh. And now you're going to go ahead and close this little hole here by selecting just these corners right here and nothing else and going to um, edit bridge and then you're going to go to uh, analysis inspector and then you're going to go ahead and repair the proximal contact first and then the basal uh, pontic area you're going to go ahead and repair and now i'm going to go ahead and um, smooth using either bubble smooth or and holding shift or just regular robust smooth on my uh, sculpt brushes here and just smoothen that all up and so basically we've generated a copy of tooth number five and now I'm going to go ahead and move it by going hitting T for transform on my keyboard and just going to move that into position okay so just getting that using these arrows to kind of position that where I want it Turn on the antagonist to make sure you don't have any mesh penetrations. And now it's actually really simple. You're going to go ahead and look from underneath and go to smooth, flatten, or just, you know, basically uh, bubble smooth and hold that shift button down to flatten or control. And you're just going to melt back any penetrations through the interproximals and basal surfaces and smooth it all up. You really want some good bit of space. We're going to go ahead and edit that later, but just for now, that's a pretty good start. So now we need to select all by hitting control A and then go to modify fit primitive and then go down to the bottom one, which is height. And now we're going to go ahead and also make sure you select those two boxes um, that I have selected in that little window. And now you're going to pick your path of insertion of your block out model. You're going to expand that triangle or that square, I should say, and then transform the whole block down and then rotate your tilt until you look at your block out wax and your kind of survey line just like that so this is creating a block out model and then once you have it kind of at the insertion direction that you want um, what you're going to do from here is type in 600 here to get a better mesh density and then hit enter and now we have a beautiful block out model from the path of insertion um, and again, that was using the modify fit primitive once you selected the whole entire model. And so now we have a separate model here, which is our block out model. I'm going to hit control A, deform smooth, and I'm going to further smooth my block out model here. And that's going to be a beautiful smooth block out wax right there. And so the next step is to modify the block out model in order to engage undercuts of your clasp. So you're just going to remove a little bit of material uh, right at the tip of your clasp engagement um, by using like robust smooth or bubble smooth and, and smoothing it down. And so now we need to actually remesh this model. So we're going to go ahead and highlight both of those and hit combine. And then we're going to go to edit remesh 
um, or let's see, yeah, remesh right there. And it's going to take a good while to regenerate that mesh into kind of a new mesh that's gonna be combined. So this can be quite graphics card intensive right here. So this is also when you could get crashes and things like that. But we're creating a new model that is a technically a single model, although you'll see later that we have to modify this even further. So here we go now. We're, we got our remeshed model, and this is the model in which we're going to make our uh, partial denture frame. So uh, from here now, we're going to go ahead and accept that remesh. And now we're going to use the select tool and start to draw our um, partial denture borders on that model. I'm going to hit clear selection to kind of wipe it clean. And let's see here. Beautiful. It's looking good. Got that beautiful block out model now, which is, which is our fit primitive model that's been remeshed. And I'm going to turn off my tooth, go to select, put my brush size on small, and then just draw my frame here being coronal to the block out wax on the lingual and on the guide plane being coronal to the block out wax. Hold shift, I think, if you want to remove and no button if you want to add, just click and drag it. Going right into my soft tissue retention right there um, into the interproximals and again, coronal to the block out on the guide planes. And then you have to fill in every little spec. You can't have any holes here. So you need to make sure you take your time here and fill in without having even the tiniest little hole. And then you're gonna hit B as in boy on your keyboard to smooth that border once you have it the shape that you want it. And if you have an error where you don't get to see your smooth border, it means you got holes somewhere. So here, that's a beautiful smooth border. And then we need to make that its own special mesh. So you could hit Y on your keyboard to separate that as its own mesh. And now we have our own little mesh right here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, select the mesh, and then I'm going to go to hit D on your keyboard for extrude, D as in dog. I'm going to go to normal offset, and then I'm going to go ahead and make it 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters thick on that slider and hit accept. And then you'll see the intaglios highlighted. I'm going to hit I for invert so that the cameo is highlighted, and I'm going to go to deform smooth, and that's going to create a smooth surface and now i'm going to go ahead and accept that that's sometimes where you'll get some errors is when you try to smooth that cameo border and then i'm going to go to sculpt smooth robust smooth or bubble smooth let's see i'll switch to robust and just any little spikes that you have you might want to just go ahead and smooth this is very advanced though guys um you know easy for me to do because I've been CAD designing forever, but I think for, you know, it's worth just buying ExoCAD and doing this in like two minutes. Um, okay, so now we need to create our split file. So we got our original tooth, and what we need to do to our original tooth is first um, smooth the pontic area so that it's a good bit offset from the um, tissue. So I just, first I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit, Make Solid, and then I'm going to go ahead to go to Sculpt, Bubble Smooth, and I'm going to hold control down and just melt it back a little bit even more on the pontic area so that we have space, uh, adequate thickness of space underneath that tooth. And then I'm going to hit control A and then I'm going to go to um, um, offset. And then I'm going to create a 200 micron offset model, which is going to be 200 microns bigger than my original tooth. And I'm going to rename that. Um, that Yeah, here we go. We're creating this offset model right here. Perfect. Hit accept. That is now an offset tooth. And I'm going to rename that offset so I don't get confused from the original tooth. And this is the tooth which we'll use to Boolean subtract from the framework. And so now, um, and you might need to make your framework solid for this to work as well. I'm going to make that offset tooth solid. Okay. And now um, I'm going to go to my framework. And I need to, there's like meshes within meshes here. So I need to delete one of the outer meshes by selecting one of those colors and hitting delete. And then on the intaglio surface, I also have two meshes and I'm gonna pick the block out mesh, which is the pink one in my instance, and double click it. Let's see if I could just double click just the pink and then delete that. So now I have one unified mesh 
with no other colors. And then I'm gonna select my frame, then select the block out tooth. Oh, I did that wrong. Select the frame, select the block out tooth, and hit Boolean difference. And hit accept. And now I have cut a perfect slot for that tooth to fit into. And now I have my original tooth right there that is the true to size tooth, which will have a 200 micron gap to fit the framework. And you would print uh, the tooth out of tooth material and the frame out of frame material. I like to use like some retainer or some type of material like that. Anyway, I hope this helps guys. Can't wait to see how you use it.